This video is all about how to solve equations with algebraic fractions in them. Here are some examples. x divided by 3 is an algebraic fraction. 3x over 4 equals 12. That's another algebraic fraction like that. And y plus 8 over 2 equals 10. Another algebraic fraction. This is all about how do we deal with those algebraic fractions. Let's start off though with what does it mean when we see a fraction and how can we interpret it. If I ask you to do 20 over 5, you need to know that that fraction sort of also means division. So 20 divided by 5 and 20 divided by 5 is 4. How many 5's go into 20? The answer is 4. If we look at another one, 16 over 2. That's how many 2's go into 16? It's 16 divided by 2, it's 8. And finally, if we look at 30 over 5, that's 30 divided by 5, it's 6. Now, what you need to really understand about all of these is that you can rewrite these division relationships as multiplication relationships. Um, so the reason that we know that 20 divided by 5 is 4 is hopefully because we know our 4 and 5 times tables um, and therefore we know that 4 times 5 is another way of writing 20. 20 can be written as 4 times 5. So look, it's the same relationship. We have a division relationship here using 20, 5 and 4 and we have a multiplication relationship here, 20 equals 4 times 5. Same relationship between the numbers, just expressed in a different way. And I'm going to use the fact that you can express a division in a different way as a multiplication all the way through this video. So it is important that you understand when you see a division like this, that you can rearrange it, you can change it so that it looks like a multiplication. And if we look at this one, 30 is 5 times 6. So you can see it works for every single division that you can think of. OK, let's ask you a slightly different question. What happens if we have a box to fill in? And I say something divided by 4 equals 3. Well, some of you may be able to tell that it's 12 straight away by knowing your timetables really well. But if you weren't able to do it, <coughs> excuse me, if you weren't able to do it straight away, uh, then you might consider rewriting it like we have done above as a multiplication problem. The number in the box is equal to 3 times 4. And therefore it's 12. Let's have a look at another one of those. The number in the box divided by 5 makes 16. This time, perhaps, you won't know exactly how to do this from your times tables. You won't know the answer straight away. So perhaps this time, it is better to rewrite this as a multiplication and then to actually work out 5 times 16. And I do 5 times 16 very quickly using a little grid method. It makes 80. So we know that 80 is the number that goes in the, both those boxes. Let's have a look at another one. Box divided by 7 equals 13. What number goes in the box? Well, again, I'm going to rewrite this as a multiplication. 7 times 13. I'm going to do 7 times 13 in a little grid method. So that's 91. And the answer in the box is 91. Let's have a look at what happens when we turn those boxes into x's. So here is an example, x divided by 3 equals 7. How do we rewrite that using a multiplication? Well, the x is just like the box, <coughs> excuse me, and we can rewrite straight underneath x equals 7 times 3, like that. And 7 times 3 is just 21. That's the answer. What if we had x divided by 5 equals 6? 
how do we solve that? Well, we rewrite it as a multiplication, 6 times 5, and get the answer, x equals 30. Now, we tend to want to tie this method in with other ways that you've seen of solving equations. Um, and if you've watched our previous videos, you'll see that we've used the method of inverses. So on this next example, I'm going to discuss it in terms of inverses, which are opposites. x divided by 7 equals 4. Now, x divided by 7 is going to make 4. If we want to work backwards, as previously discussed in those videos, we're going to have to do the opposite of divide by 7. Now, the opposite of a divide is a times, multiply. So, this time, I'm going to write down multiply by 7 to both sides of the equation. And this is going to achieve the same thing as in the previous two examples, um, but you may hear your teacher talking about uh, opposites, about c divided by 7, so you've got to times by 7, and it, it does tend to make things a little bit easier moving forwards, but it is going to have the same effect as this example above here. x divided by 7 times 7 just leaves us with that unknown number. If you've got something, you divide it by 7 and times it by 7, you'll have that original something again. Here we have 4 times 7 on this side of the equal sign. 4 times 7 is 28. And that gives us our answer. And this is a little bit more standard. This is a little bit more the way that we would expect people to start writing their equations. With little brackets showing what they've done to both sides of the equation um, and with a clear answer line. You can always check that your answer is correct by putting it back into the original equation. <coughs> 28 divided by 7 does give you 4, so we know that that's correct. Let's have a look at another one very quickly. x divided by 8 equals 3. We've got a divided by 8. The opposite of divide is times. So we're going to do x... Sorry. We're going to do multiply by 8, both sides of the equation. And that is going to give us x equals 3 times 8, which is 24. And again, I will check that. 24 divided by 8 does make 3. Good. <coughs> OK, let's make it a little bit more complicated. We have 3x over 4 equals 12. We have to work out what that x value is. Well, you can see here we've got a divide by 4. We've also got a times by 3 on the top there. When you see a fraction, um, everything on the top of the fraction has been done first, and then everything on the bottom... I suppose that's not quite technically true. The, the number on the bottom is the last thing that appears to have been done in this case. So this says x multiplied by 3, and then, get your answer, divide it by 4. So working backwards, we have to undo the last thing that was done. We need to times by 4. And that is going to give us 3x on that side of the equation. Just check that you understand what I've done there. We had 3x divided by 4, and then I've times by 4. That divide by 4 and that multiply by 4 are going to cancel each other out. They're going to mean that that's going to disappear we're just going to be left with the top of the fraction, the 3x. And 12 times 4 is 48. <coughs> How do we solve this now? Well, dividing by 3 is going to give us x equals 16. And that's the answer. Let's have a look, look at another example where we've done something on the top of the fraction. This time, I've taken my number y, whatever it is, 
added 8 and then divided by 2 and this is what I mean the, the plus 8 happened first and then underneath this line this line goes all the way across so it tells us we did the plus 8 first and then divided the answer by 2 some people attempted to take away 8 as the first step in this equation unfortunately that doesn't give you a correct answer um, because if you're going to work backwards if you're going to use these opposites you need to undo the last step first so the last step that was done we did y plus 8 and then divided by 2 the last step that was done was the divide by 2 so we have to undo that first we have to do the opposite of divide by 2 and that is multiply by 2 and when we get, get divide by 2 multiplied by 2 we cancel each other out and we are just left with the top of the fraction there so again just take some time just to check what have I done I had y plus 8 I divided it by 2 and then I times it by 2 and because divide by 2 and times by 2 are opposites they cancel out and I'm just left with the y plus 8 on the right hand side of the equation 20 then as before <coughs> we are taking away 8 from both sides and it, uh, I say as before is because we've covered this on previous videos um, 20 take away 8 is 12 right one last one before we crank it up again and get a bit more difficult we have got x minus 3 over 7 equals 2 again you have to read the order in which these operations have been done the minus 3 take away 3 happened first and then divide by 7 so to undo those steps you need to do times by 7 and that will get rid of the, divi the division the fraction bit and then here 2 times 7 14 and here we can see now we can get rid of that minus 3 by adding 3 and you'll have x equals 17 as your answer right we're going to get a little bit more difficult again now so I'm going to put 2x plus 1 over 5 equals 3 again we have to look at the steps that have happened x has been multiplied by 2 then 1 was added and then this line which goes underneath all of that tells us that the final step was to divide by 5 and the answer made 3 so we have to undo that final step first and we end up with 2x plus 1 equals 3 remember divide by 5 and times by 5 will cancel each other out they will m get rid of the divide by 5 get rid of the times by 5 and you will just be left with this 2x plus 1 and this 3 times 5 doesn't make 3 does it I made a mistake there makes 15 how do we solve this equation now well we subtract 1 from both sides and divide by 2 let's have a look at a slightly different one now this time the fraction has an additional plus 5 that's not part of the fraction added on to the end and this means that the plus 5 was done after all of those things so it's a matter of trying to read what the algebra is telling you try and find out some people describe it as the story of x what happened to x well this says I added 2 got my answer divided it by 3 
and then after that added 5 and I made 8. So to undo those steps, do them in reverse order, take away the 5, you will just be left with this fraction here. Remember to do 8 take away 5 is 3. Now we solve this as we've been doing with these fractions once before. We've got a divide by 3. So to get rid of that, we times by 3. And then to get rid of the plus 2, we have to subtract it. Don't forget to check that your number works in the original equation. If we take this 7 and put it in here, we get 7 plus 2, that's 9. Divide by 3, that's 3 plus 5 does equal 8, so we know it's correct. And the last one I'm going to show you is 3w minus 1 over 7 minus 5 equals minus 3. So, as with the last question, the last thing last step that was done to W was a minus 5. We times it by 3, took away 1, divided that answer by 7, and then we took away 5. So we have to undo that last step first by adding 5 to both sides. If you're unsure of that step, that's a negative number, but we're adding 5. If you think of your number line, minus 3 is here. Adding 5 means going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, gets you to 2. Now what do we do? Well, this should now be familiar to you. We've got a 3w minus 1 over 7 equals 2. We're going to times by 7 to get 3w minus 1 equals 14. We're going to add 1 to both sides to get 3w equals 15. And then we're going to divide by 3 to get w equals 5. Check it in the original equation. 3w's makes 15. Take away 1 makes 14. Divided by 7 makes 2. And 2 minus 5 does make minus 3. So 5 is correct. So, I have some questions for you to try. If you just have a look at these, and in a minute, I will give you the answers. Okay, here are the answers. You can check them, um, and if you're not sure about how any of them are done, I suggest that you look back over the video um, or go and ask your teacher. Thanks very much.